It's the professional MasterChef semi-finals. Last time, Malin and Freddy were sent home. Now, the best six will be split into two groups, cooking for some of the most celebrated chefs in the country. Yeah, if a chef talks to you in the kitchen, you make sure that you answer Where's nice chef? and loud. Yeah. Smashed it, really good, really good, all down to the training. Now, the first three chefs battle to secure their place in the finals. 30-year-old event chef Jan, 24-year-old sous chef Olivia, and 35-year-old executive chef Abinda. It's been tough. The nervousness is going up and down. Uh, the blood pressure is going up and down all the time. Just got to kind of keep coming up with dishes that are going to top the ones before. It's kind of like a bottomless bank of energy that you just got to find which you don't even have. There's no place for mistakes anymore, and we just have to nail every single dish. I really don't want to mess it up. They've got to come in here and really fight for that opportunity, showcase how good they really are. Everything is riding on today. This is for a place in finals week. It's early morning, and three of our semi-finalists are en route to one of the UK's most unique destination restaurants. Really, really, really excited. Excited to see where we're going. Yeah, it's a surprise. Huh? It's a great bit of countryside. Located in the remote West Wales countryside, Anis here is a tiny 20 cover former coaching inn. It's run by a chef who's ripped up the culinary rule book. Gareth Ward. That's crab gone for. I grew up in the northeast. I was quite an unruly kid. School for me was just a place to go and see my mates. One day I just had a chat with my uncle and I said, what should I do? And he's like, why don't you be a chef? And I was like, well, why would I want to do that? <laughs> and he's like, well, put it this way, so you'll always have a job. Everyone needs feeding, and I was like, yeah, cool, let's do it. After grasping the basics in a pub kitchen, Gareth landed a job with Raymond Blanc protégé Aaron Patterson at Hambleton Hall in Rutland. Aaron opened his eyes to the world of Michelin star level fine dining. I remember walking in there and I'd never seen anything like it in my life. I was like, oh my God, this is unbelievable. And that's when it became like a proper obsession. I was like, right, okay, I want to be the best at this. Driven to succeed, Gareth's next move as sous chef alongside two Michelin starred Sat Baines would prove to be a game changer. He will go, I want to have that flavor, but I'm going to make it in a completely different way. And then he, he makes it some crazy way, and then you taste it and go, wow, it still tastes like that, but it doesn't look like anything like it. He just opened up my mind, you know, made me a stronger person. Soon after, Gareth moved to the remote Welsh countryside to take over and is here. I've been here six years now. It's been hard work. His mission, to take diners on a journey through a tasting menu of up to 24 courses, many of which revolve around ingredients aged in the restaurant's bespoke Himalayan salt chamber. Aging meat is a passion of mine. Like, I love it. Like, we age everything. You know, we've started aging fish, and it's, it's one of the most insane things I've ever tasted. Leaving it in there for like three or four days, it's just, it changes the whole flavor, the texture, everything. And to push the envelope even further, traditional seasonings are off limits. Like instead of using salt, lemon juice, or pepper and things like that, we use miso, rice vinegar, mirin, soy. Every dish has almost got them elements in, even the desserts. They're there, they're hidden away, but it kind of ties the whole menu in, so it's, it's, it's flows. This unique style of marrying the best British wild produce with pungent Japanese flavors, whilst pushing the boundaries of preservation, has been met with a series of accolades, including Chef of the Year, Best Restaurant in Wales, and in 2018, his first Michelin star. The brakes are off, you know, and now it's just whatever we want to do. I love it when someone tries to tell me it won't work because I'm like, I'll show you, it'll work. <laughs> I love Gareth Ward's vision. Uh, it's basically my life purpose, just 
moving to the country, just wait for people to, to show up, you know? It's, it's the dream, it's, it's, it's brilliant. He has taken his cooking into a different league, into a different style altogether. Guys, welcome. Thanks. Yeah, he's a massive inspiration, so I'm absolutely buzzing. You know, I can't wait to get in the kitchen, and I feel so privileged to be able to, you know, see um, behind the scenes, really. Let's go. Let's go and see the kitchen. To help the chefs understand his food, Gareth is giving a masterclass on three small plates from his elaborate tasting menu, each of which is being prepared using his favorite cooking method. As you see, there's, there's barbecues everywhere. Like, I'm obsessed with barbecue and stuff, just because, you know, you can. <laughs> the first dish illustrates Gareth's revolutionary approach to seasoning, his take on the classic chicken katsu. I ate a chicken katsu one day and thought, you know what, I'm going to try and recreate my own version of this. I mean, who doesn't like chicken katsu, you know? Like, I love it. Skewers of chicken leg and compressed chicken skin are roasted over the coals. Cooking any meat on the charcoal always gives you a different dimension altogether. It takes the flavor of any meat from here to here. Yeah, it's my favorite. So, <laughs> it's my favorite also. So. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, they're starting to crisp up on the outside. So, these are ready now. We're going to rest them in some chicken fat. And they rest in there for a few minutes. Just let them cool down slightly, suck all that fat back in, just make them really super juicy, tender. And then we just get them glazed up. Next comes Gareth's trademark seasoning, starting with a sticky roast chicken glaze infused with soy. So these are panko breadcrumbs cooked in our own cultured butter, really, really slowly until they go golden brown and crispy. And a katsu ketchup made from chicken stock, soy, and curry powder. And as you would a katsu curry, you'd cover the defried chicken with the salt. And then just to give it a little hit, this is an incredible seven chili blend with sesame seeds and stuff in from Japan. It's absolutely amazing. And that's it, guys. That's our take on a chicken katsu. Everyone goes, oh, he, this is a Japanese restaurant. And all this. I'm like, no, it's not a Japanese restaurant at all. I've never worked in Japan. I just make it up, to be honest. I'm not even going to lie to you. It's just if you bang a bit of soy sauce and miso in things, everyone thinks it's Japanese, you know what I mean? <laughs> The surrounding Welsh countryside provides a vast natural larder and is the source of inspiration for Gareth's next dish, his garlic prawns. Preserving is a big part of the restaurant, so we preserve 200 kilos of wild garlic in one day and put it in the fridge so it's there for the whole year for one dish. To achieve a distinctive garlic prawn taste, Gareth uses wild garlic in four ways as a wild garlic oil. Obviously, this stuff's very strong too much, and you'll kill the dish. A wild garlic vinegar glaze. Just gives it a nice acidity. This is pickled wild garlic stem. And finally, a roasted prawn head soy dressing. And then this is seasoned with the vinegar from the pickled wild garlic. You get this salty, garlicky, acidic, and beautiful, creamy dressing. This is one of my favorite dishes on the menu. Brilliant. It's really intense flavors. The wild garlic is just the right balance. The acidity coming through as well really helps. So amazing. Months of preparation goes into each of Gareth's dishes. And his final taster, Welsh Wagyu beef with shiitake, is no exception. The beef is, is aged for two, three months. Aging meat just builds so much flavor and gets rid of that moisture. The texture and the color and the fattiness is just mega. It's just the most unbelievable thing. You want to get these little burnt ends on, you know? These little black bits, really crispy. Like, don't be scared of a bit of color. That's flavor, that is. Next comes the compulsory Asian flavors, starting with a soy glaze. The whole idea of this glaze is it's sticky ribs, isn't it? Yeah. Sticky beef ribs. It's looking uh, incredible. Obviously, I want you to eat this in a certain way, so I'm going to completely cover this piece of beef. The dish is finished with a pungent Japanese katsu ketchup, shiitake dressing, puffed rice, dried shiitakes, and nori seaweed. 
And that's it, guys. That's our interpretation of a beef and mushroom. You get that really kind of smoky flavour from the barbecue, which is kind of like goes all the way through your mouth. You can eat that all day again. So now I've uh, fed you, I think it's time that you fed me. I want you to take some inspiration off what we've done. But obviously, I want to see your style, I want to see your passion and your flair and, and what you do. We've got loads of ingredients at the top there that we've picked out for you. So uh, I'm going to go for a coffee. You guys get on with it, I can't wait. The chefs have just 30 minutes to impress Gareth with a dish that reflects his style of cooking. There's a lot of uh, interesting stuff on that table. I um, feel very inspired. It's obviously difficult to get into the mindset of no salt and everything, so I just gotta try and make sure that I use ingredients that are um, gonna add the, the, the seasoning and the flavor where the salt would. Something new, but exciting. I'm a big fan of charcoal and barbecue. I've used it in my kitchens many times, so let's see how it's gonna go. I mean, it's always gonna be hard, like, because it, it, you're getting put on the spot, aren't you? You know, trying to season things properly without sticking your hand in a bowl of salt. Well, that's going to be interesting, you know? And that's when, like, the skill and the training and the experience comes out as a chef. 30-year-old Jan grew up in France and now runs his own private catering business in London. So the dishes we tried earlier on were absolutely incredible. It's really focused on the taste and on the boom factor, you know? So I'm going to try and do the same. <laughs> Taking inspiration from Gareth, Jan has also decided to interpret a classic pairing, duck and cherries. So I'm using shoyu koji. I think it's like a soybean and sugar reduction. So I'm going to try to create some kind of a glaze of that. I'm going to use a little bit of miso as well to sweeten because I don't have access to sugar. I'm trying very much to get that crispiness of it. I hope the duck is going to be pink at the end of that. <laughs> okay, here we are. I think I feel pretty good with it. We'll see. Jan's duck has been glazed with miso and soya bean base shoyu koji, and served with soy shiitakes and pickled cherries with a black cardamom and shallot vinegar sauce. I like how like it's rustic. It's very simple as well, which I like. Not too many ingredients, you haven't gone crazy. Beautiful piece of duck. It's very tender, got a bit of char on there. Loads of acidity, which I love. You know, and then the sauce has got some beautiful sweetness in there. Bold flavours, big flavours. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a lovely little dish, that. Yeah, lovely little dish. I'm feeling, yeah, on top of the world. I mean, it's great to have such a great feedback. It's, it's amazing, it's amazing. Um, I feel very proud. I'm gonna play with my strength, which is my spices. 35-year-old Arbinda is executive chef of two Indian restaurants and a catering company. I'm going to roast off the shallots on the barbecue. Then I'm going to marinate with the langoustines with, the, with a bit of spices and the sweet miso paste. So it's just going to balance out the flavor of the sweetness and the spiciness in it. Not happy with the prep of the prawns. Arbinda's barbecue chili prawn has been marinated in garam masala and sweet miso, and served with fermented black bean and mirin cucumber, charred shallots, pickled muli, and samphire. One of the things I will say straight away is that the prawn, give it a little blanch in water, yeah. and then that, that shell would have come off beautiful. It's just that little bit of uh, appearance. The prawn is beautifully cooked. It's got that beautiful barbecue flavour, tiny little bit of spice, 
lovely and sweet. It's the fermented black beans, it gives it that nice saltiness. saltiness. Yeah, yeah. It goes very, very well with the little charred shallots. It's a, it's a very tasty dish, Chef. <laughs> it was a good experience, and it's a massive uh, achievement. It's definitely opened a, a different dimension of cooking altogether for me. What you get with Gareth's food is a, like a real punch of flavour, so that's what I'm trying to replicate. London-based Olivia is sous chef at a Mayfair hotel and is basing her dish around the classic Asian combination of beef and black bean. I'm going to use the acidity and saltiness from the fermented black beans to season my beef, and then I'm going to cook on the barbecue to get that really kind of, like, um, smoky, salty flavour from there. Black beans are quite salty, so that's why I'm adding mirin to kind of try and sweeten it up and, and lessen the salt. Beef's looking really, really good, really happy. Olivia's barbecue beef has been served with fermented black bean sauce made with mirin and beef fat with shiitake mushrooms, fermented cabbage and pickled wild garlic stems. Beef cooked beautifully, beautiful sweetness, awesome texture. I love the earthiness from the black beans. I've got the wild garlic on there, which for me is essential in a beef black bean. Should have garlic on there. You've used the ingredients that I would might have picked off that table, you know, which is quite cool. It is delicious. It's a really nice dish, that is. Thank you. Amazing. I mean, you know, the feedback that he gave was amazing, and um, he's a massive inspiration. So to be able to get the opportunity to cook for him is just, you know, it's unbelievable. An inspiring first day is over. Tomorrow, Olivia, Arbinda and Jan will face their biggest challenge yet, joining Gareth's kitchen brigade for service. It's day two. And today, the semi-finalists will each be responsible for two courses from Gareth's lunchtime tasting menu. As well as cooking the chicken katsu, Olivia will also have to master another classic interpretation. Crispy duck with hoisin sauce. You almost want to slightly char the skin. Yeah. You know, you want it burnt a little bit, and it gives it that little bitterness because the hoisin sauce is so sweet. This duck is ready now, so it's nice and charred. This is a roast garlic salt. And then we've got our own hoisin sauce. You're covering the piece of meat so you can't eat it any other way than how we want you to eat it. The dish is finished with a thin layer of compressed pickled cucumber. You'll be slicing these to order, obviously. Yeah. Coated in an oil made from onion tops. And you're just going to lie it over the top. And that's it. That's the hoisin duck with cucumber. Yeah, amazing. You really do get that kind of authentic Chinese duck pancake really comes to mind. It's yeah. just like, yeah, it's something from your memory. It's amazing. People even say they can taste the pancake in there and it's not <laughs> even on there. I think it's a, something in the head, but yeah. Olivia's first challenge is to prep her duck from scratch. It will need torching and roasting before it hits the barbecue. There's a lot of kind of pressure on my shoulders. Mission standards are so high, and I'm really, really excited to just um, get going and, and really fill the heat of the kitchen. Our binder is also hard at work. He's been tasked with Gareth's Welsh Wagyu beef ribs with shiitake. There's a beautiful uh, you know, piece of meat, though. You need to respect your product, your ingredient, and uh, the dish is going to come out beautiful. But he will also be responsible for delivering another prized dish, the chili crab. 
It's a simple dish to put together and yep. serve, but obviously getting there is probably one of the toughest dishes in the kitchen. So no pressure, chef. Lightly tap it. If you get a bit over, overzealous with the old knife and you smash that, there's going to be a million pieces of shell everywhere, and then you're in trouble. Uh, you want to keep it beautiful, big pieces. Don't break it up. No parts of the crab go to waste. Half the shells are roasted to make a crab and soy dressing. It's really nice, it's really intense. And the rest used to make a crab sauce flavoured with shallots, ginger, garlic and dashi. And a crab oil. And then for texture, a little bit of rice, then a little bit of the chilli, yeah. and then just a little bit of fresh coriander. And that's it. That's the chilli crab. Hopefully, I'm going to take all these points on board. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have fun. Yeah. I'm sure you will. Feeling nervous? I think it's good to be nervous. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be a tough day for me, I know. So hopefully, I will be able to deliver it. Jan is also busy, preparing the garnishes for his first dish, the garlic prawn. The thing I'm most worried about is just to cook the prawn right. Just have to be perfect. But he also has the honor of closing the meal with one of the restaurant's signature desserts, Gareth's interpretation of tiramisu. We're going to fill this bowl up with liquid nitrogen. The tiramisu is served with two granitas, one mascarpone and one coffee, which Jan will have to prepare in service. The liquid nitrogen reaches a temperature of almost minus 200 degrees, instantly freezing the granita mix. You're just going to really, really slowly pour this down the side until it sounds like it's, there's gravel in the bowl. See? It sounds like it's full of stones. Yeah. That's when you know it's ready. OK. As well as the granitas, Jan will have to get to grips with the intricate plating, which starts with five dots of coffee cake puree, followed by sweet vanilla mayo. These are a thousand pound a kilo, these vanilla pods. So obviously, there's a lot of responsibility in making sure you don't mess that up. And Cremovo gel. The Cremovo is a masala wine, but it's been enriched with egg yolks, so it's not harsh. It's really smooth, really creamy. It's amazing. And you want to fill all these gaps like that, because you're going to put this crisp on top. So that's how it will leave the kitchen. The final elements will be plated in front of the diners, including the coffee and mascarpone granitas. Creme ovo liqueur mist and dark chocolate shavings. My favourite dessert in the world, so treat it with respect, chef. Absolutely. The chef is putting a lot of faith in us, so um, I don't want to let him down. We've been shown how to do it, now we just have to crack on with it. It's midday and the restaurant is filling up. I'm excited to see what these guys have to offer. We've got to get it right, you know, it's, otherwise it'll have to be stopped and started again. So, yeah, it's, it's going to be a challenge, I think, for everybody. It's been a while uh, that I've been in a proper kind of a restaurant-style service, but I've done it before, so I know what it takes. It's all about uh, delivering the quality product on the plate. My hands are always a little bit shaky. I think I've drunk too much coffee. <laughs> but, yeah, it's a bit, a bit stressy. Uh, obviously, you want to do it right, and you don't want to screw up such a beautiful product. Your prawns are looking good there, Chef. Thank you, Chef. Tricky bit to get them on the skewer, so they don't drop off once you start cooking them. <laughs> With just 10 minutes until service starts, Olivia is barbecuing her chicken katsu skewers, which still need time to rest in the cultured butter. Just trying to kind of keep the, the smoke and the heat under control um, so that they cook kind of evenly all the way through. Obviously, this is the first course on the menu, so I um, just really want to make it perfect and uh, get off to a really, really good start for today. Service today will be run by Gareth's sous chef, Nathan Davis. So, um, lunch, it's 12 covers. So, you all know your sections, you all know your jobs. When everything's done, do you bring it then to Gareth? Gareth's going to check it before anything goes into the restaurant, so nothing leaves the kitchen until it comes up to the pass. Um, after that, you'll go into the restaurant and explain all your dishes. Let's do this. Three. Okay, first table's uh, two covers, Olivia. Table three. Yep. It's now down to Olivia to set the pace for service. She must get all 12 chicken katsu out to the diners 
table by table. Don't be scared of that glaze. Let's get it on. Yeah. That's what makes you all your panko stick to it, OK? Yeah. It's looking really good, that chicken. Just as fast as you can, let's get it out yeah. before it cools down. Every inch needs coating in the ketchup, so the diners taste every element in every bite. Yeah, that's right. perfect, that is, that's perfect. Let's get them out to the table. You got them next two for me, Olivia? Yeah, coming up now. Thank you. Really pleased. Um, you know, just need to speed up a bit now. They're looking banging. Really good. I want to eat it myself. Awesome. She's actually doing really well, yeah. She seems to be in control. She's very confident. Good afternoon. Everything looks nice and neat, tidy, nothing's overcooked. It's good. Very good. While Olivia pushes on, Arbinder's made a start on the delicate shelling of his crabs. So, Arbinder, how's it going? It's going good, Chef. Are you making sure there's no shell in there? Yeah. Awesome. Let's get these finished off and get them in the restaurant. We've got some hungry diners in there. Yeah. That is stunning. Let's get cleaned down. Yeah. Okay, and let's get ready for the next dish. Yes. Awesome. You've got to take it up a real notch, you know. Uh, definitely got adrenaline pumping. We're going to be looking at coming up on the first crabs in a minute, mate. Are we ready? We yes, chef. Brilliant. As well as shelling the crab, our binder must weigh it out so each diner gets precisely 150 grams of meat. It's all about attention to detail, and uh, I'm trying not to not to break it up. Let's go on them crabs now, please. It's all weighed out. Yeah. Nice big chunks, I see. Yes, chef. Yeah, no shell? No shell, sir. It looks like you've done a decent job of that, chef. The ball looks good. Yeah. Beautiful. That's a beautiful amount of ketchup there, chef. Thank you. You want every mouthful you want to have that dressing on. If you yep. haven't got it on there, it's not the same dish. Yep. You know, just speed this up now, otherwise this crab's going to be cold, yeah? Yes, chef. All right, a little bit of chilli, not too much. Obviously, you want that little kick, but just not too spicy. And then let's get that fresh coriander on, then let's get this out the door, chef. We'll go straight to table one, please. Nice and loud up in there. Yes, chef. Yes, thank you. And then let's get them first ones to table one, chef. Okay. Service, let's please. Go. Well, you can take them, chef. Oh. Yeah, there is no service. You, you're the, you're the you're service. service. <laughs> let's go. Table one now. <laughs> crab for you. Chili crab for you. It's chili crab for you, yeah. Oh, lovely. It's a lot of elements to plate up in the dish. So I just need to get on with it and uh, make sure everyone is happy with the food which I'm serving here. So you've got six more away, chef. Yes, chef. Yes, awesome. So I want you really nice and confident. Yeah. A bit, little bit quicker. Yeah. Yeah. And then let's get this dish out. Come on, Vinder, let's go. Let's let's move. Got to get this out, chef. I'm just going to jump on and give you a little hand here, chef, because yes, yeah, you've got six balls away. So when we've got the first two ready, please, we go into table three. Yes, mate. Wait, That's been a nice and loud of India. Yeah? Wait, chef, wait, yeah, wait, if a chef wait, talks wait. to you in the kitchen, you make sure that you answer wait, nice chef. and loud. Yeah. These are all good of India. Wait, chef. All good. Wait, chef. He's a bit, he's a bit underconfident, I think. I think um, he needs to talk a bit louder. He needs to answer the chefs a bit louder. You know, he's dressing is fine, but he's just, I think he's just lacking a bit of confidence. I think he's feeling the pressure. I should have been, uh, you know, able to get it a bit more faster. Hopefully, I'm going to do uh, better in, in the, uh, for the next uh, dish. Chef, you ready? Yes, sir. You're up next. Yes, sir. Prawn dish. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. The pressure is now on Yan to cook his delicate prawns. OK, so we've got five away at the moment, mate. We, oui, Chef. But the fierce heat of the barbecue can overcook them in seconds. How are we looking, Chef? Uh, yes, yeah, Chef, I think the barbecue is a tiny bit too Yeah, that's good. Let's get them off and get them hanging. Wait. Yeah. We're dressing these five, and then we've got six to go. We oui, chef. So all the tables are clear now, chef. So everyone's waiting for you. We oui, chef. Then prawns look perfectly cooked, chef. Beautiful. Oui, chef. Just top it off with your wild garlic first before you do your sauce. Wait. Oui. So what we're going to do 
boys will put the plates down for you. OK. You will put a spoon or two of sauce in the bowl and explain the dish. We shall. Okey doke. Right, let's go on the first two, please. Let's go to table one. So this is a barbecue langoustine. It's served uh, with a um, prawn headstock. That was really good, yeah. He's, he's confident, his prawns were beautiful. The dressing was beautiful, he didn't make a mess. So, yeah, he's, he's, he seems to be on it. Uh, I think it went great. Um, the client seems uh, to be happy, so I'm having uh, quite a good time. Let's go, Jan. Let's push these out, yeah? We, chef. We need to get these gone so we can get the duck out. Absolutely. OK, Olivia, so the, the first of your dishes has been called? Yep. The last prawn's about to leave the kitchen, so we need to get back on the pass and get ready to go. Yes. A lot of stuff to get done last minute, so I'm um, just going to get the cucumbers backpack and then it's really important to get duffed straight on the barbecue. It's halfway through service. I just want to be um, fast enough so that the cucumber stays crispy, which is what um, Gareth's looking for. Each ribbon of cucumber has to be evenly cut or it won't make the grade. That's too thin there? Yep. Some of these are perfect. These ones here are perfect. Yep. We've got the ducks called away now, so uh, we need, to, uh, we need yep. to move it. With diners waiting, Olivia can't afford any more slip-ups. This is when you find out if you've cooked it right or not. Yeah. That looks really good. I'll get the other side off, and then we can start getting them ducks on the barbecue. The important thing is to get them charred up and crispy as quick as possible so then birds don't overcook. You've cooked them absolutely beautiful, so you wouldn't want to ruin it now. So let's just speed it up a little bit, Olivia. We've got to get this out before that duck cools down. Yeah. Don't forget to season it with the uh, yeah. with the garlic salt, and then we'll have it on the pass, please. Yeah. Fantastic. That duck looks lovely. That's that's perfect. Perfect amount of in. The last touch is the perfectly sliced cucumber. Thank you. Let's have a tray down, and just go into the restaurant, please. So that's table one. Yeah. Table one's duck's gone. Duck is cooked absolutely perfectly. Perfect. Final push. Well done. Really confidently dressed. Thank you. Perfect. Well done. The dish has gone out beautiful. I'm very happy with that. So how was that? Yeah, really, really enjoyed it. Yeah, they were both very good. Very nicely dressed. A lot of confidence there. So, yeah, well done. You can relax now. Yeah. <laughs> The service was absolutely amazing. Really, really enjoyed it. I love the kitchen and love the setup. Yeah, it's a dream. So that's all of the Wagyu ribs in the restaurant being called away now. Uh, we can start to go, please. We oui, chef. Thank you very much, mate. Oui. It's now down to our binder to prove that he can deliver his Wagyu beef with confidence and at speed. A lot of money on that plancha there, chef. Let's get these cooked beautiful. We oui, chef. The beef is seared, but it still needs crisping up on the fierce barbecue. So this is the time when it can all go wrong, Abinda. Yeah. This barbecue is going to get very hot on you now because yeah. there's all that fat. Not too much colour, Chef. Get them nice glazed up now, yes? Yeah? So we need to get this show on the road. Great, chef. It's nice and uh, crispy. So, you know, hopefully Chef will be happy with this. Lovely, mate. They look Brilliant. great. They look good. Yeah. Let's get them on the plate. Let's get them out the door. Our binder now has to plate five more elements in order, including the shiitake ketchup and dressing, and puffed rice. You look more confident with this one, Abinda. We oui, chef, thank you. Yeah, you're trying to get the feel of the kitchen. We oui. on the barbecue. That's oui. where you belong, isn't it? <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> That's it, mate. Beautiful That's chef. Right. While our binder serves the diners. Jan is making a start on the granitas for his tiramisu finale. Better if it's plugged in. That's about right. How are we getting on, Chef? Yeah, Chef, just finished the coffee one. Yeah, that's beautiful. Great. Right. Perfect. Let's get the second one made and then you're home free, Chef. Yes, yeah, Chef. So, Bindi, the, the last ones are five of them in total, please. We oui, chef. Finish on a high. He's 
got a bit more confidence now, a bit more spring in his step. He's got a smile on his face, he's happy. <laughs> All you have to do is give him a barbecue. Last two, Chef. Great, Chef. Beautiful. How did you get on? Excellent, Chef. Yeah? yeah. Look at that smile. <laughs> That's what I want to see. You're on fire. Yeah. Yeah? Thank well you. Done, Thank you so Thank much. You very much. Thank you. It was incredible. I huh? did a pretty good job with the with the with the beef dish. I think it's a, it's a proud moment for me. I'm feeling really happy for myself. It's now down to Yan to finish service on a high. Yeah, look at that! How beautiful that is. Cheers. You get your balls out and then they start building these dishes and get them out the door, chef. Yes, chef. Let's thanks. go. Yan must now prove he can deliver the intricate plating. Yeah, perfect size, them chef. No bigger, no smaller. Make sure they get all them gas filled up. Uh, it's going good, so I'm just going to push to get those out because the customer are waiting. He needs a light touch, or the delicate sugar crisp will crack. Beautiful, Jan. That's your Thank first you. six ready to go. Great. Hands on the pass, please. The final three elements need to be plated in front of the diners. So this is the tiramisu, and this is a coffee and mascarpone granita. A cream, cream ovo spray on top, and it's going to be finished with chocolate. Hope you like it, guys. Thank Enjoy. You very much. It's a lot of fun. It really is. Um, I mean, I couldn't ask for a better, a better day, really. Awesome. You happy with them, chef? Yes, yeah, chef. All good. Like the gaps are all filled. Let's get them to the restaurant. Get finished. Yes. Nice, quick pace. Dressed very, very clean. Very, very confident. Yeah, he's good. He's a good guy. Dan, done. Awesome. Everything was amazing. Great. You did Thank a good job so there. You smashed it. Uh, it was great. Um, I'm very inspired. It, it gave me hope for something that is so similar to what I would like one day to do. And that, and that knowing that it is possible and that it, it exists, it's a great thing. went really smooth, there wasn't too many problems. The guys really seemed to enjoy themselves. I hope they take some inspiration from here and they cook something influenced by what we've taught them at the restaurant. That will be a huge honour for us. That will be tough to bits. I uh, can't explain the feelings, uh, the experience that we had uh, in the last two days. Uh, exceptional, fantastic, getting some constructive feedback, which you're going to take uh, on board you're going to remember those things for the rest of your life. It's a little bit of a life changer, that one, because I'm absolutely stunned by what they do in there. It speaks to me a lot. I love it. I love every single bit of it. Being here has just given me so much inspiration. That's an experience that I wouldn't be able to get anywhere else or with anybody else. And I'm super excited to get, just get back in the MasterChef kitchen and, and give it everything. Chef, good to see you back. Our expectations are very high. Please do not let us down. We want two dishes, a main course and a dessert in one hour and 30 minutes. At the end of this, one of you will be leaving the competition, but two of you will be going through to finals week. Off you go. feeling really, really positive and, and better off to have been up there in the kitchen with Gareth. And I've learned a lot of new stuff, and, you know, it's a real inspiration, so um, it just makes you want the, the competition even more now. 
So for the main course, I'm going to be making uh, poached chicken to top with black garlic and a crispy chicken skin crumb. And then around that is some smoked board beans and blowtorch baby jam and a barley porridge. And it's going to be finished with a barley and egg broth. And then for the dessert, I'm doing a jasmine cake and strawberry granita and a rhubarb and strawberry foam. This all sounds fantastic. Fantastic. Has Gareth and, and his style of cooking had any inspiration on the dishes that you've brought to the kitchen today? Um, obviously, Gareth doesn't use any salt, so he's seasoning everything with natural items that add salt to the dish. So I'm going to use the black garlic to season the chicken. Um, and then the plating of my dessert, um, he plates in a way so that the guest is forced to eat it the way he wants to. So that's the way I've decided to plate my dessert today. Lots of ideas here. She's got a lot of work to do. Chicken for our main course. The addition of the black garlic as a seasoning with the chicken skin is very clever. Olivia's not putting a sauce with this dish. She's putting a barley broth with it. So the broth needs to be great in its flavor, packed full of energy, and really lift this dish. Olivia's making a jasmine cake. We have rhubarb and a lemon verbena granita. I'm never certain that a granita can work with a cake. Granita is a water ice. Personally, I think of cake and cream, ice cream. I do expect something that looks stunning, though, especially from Olivia. 35 minutes gone. Working with Gareth, has that given you a clue to the direction that you want to go in? Absolutely, it's truly inspiring and uh, you start wrapping your head around recipes and trying to really go deep into, okay, what, what can I do to change that ingredients and do it this, this, that. And I think in the end, with enough hard work, it'll pay off. Jan's dish is roast duck breast with soy, pork and honey, confit duck leg, fennel slaw, fennel date puree. We've got salsify, and the dish is going to be finished with a port jus. You've got sweet notes, you've got sour notes, you've got sharp notes running through this dish. This is going to be a dish all about balance. The duck is looking pretty good so far. It's cooked very slowly, you know, and I have to glaze it every five minutes and to make sure that I, you know, I don't overcook it, basically. Very straightforward sounding dessert, mango carpaccio. Coconut sorbet, basil and chili syrup, mango and lime curd. He's using the queen of the mangoes here, the Alfonso mango. It's beautiful, has a wonderful texture, very sweet. He's also got a coconut and lime financier, basically a very small cake with a little crispy coating on the outside. It's absolutely delicious. Normally served in France with your coffee as a petit four. Ah. With the amount of energy, and time that we spend in that competition. It means a lot. These dishes have to stand out from the rest of the chefs, but I know exactly what to do. And if I don't mess anything up, it should be all right. <laughs> you are halfway, chefs. That means you've got 45 minutes left, please. There are a lot of risky elements uh, involved in both the dishes. Um, really want to produce the, the food that uh, you know the judges haven't tasted before. Even on the dessert today, you're going to see a very unfamiliar uh, kind of ice cream. So God knows what's going to happen. What are your two dishes, please, chef? So it's a guinea fowl uh, served with the Kashmiri coriander korma, with the green mustard and cold rabi puree. And it's served with the crispy lotus root uh, crisps, uh, fox nuts. And it's uh, being served with the uh, fermented pickled turnips inspired from Garrett's uh, kitchen. What's a fox nut, please, chef? So fox nuts is, comes from the lotus seeds. Uh, you deep fry and it's just puff up, uh, and it's very healthy in nature. What is your dessert? Dessert, I'm doing uh, chocolate cocoa uh, coated uh, coconut. It's just like a cracked uh, coconut on the plate. And it's served with the chocolate soy. And I'm doing uh, turmeric and fennel ice cream. Wow. With the lychee puree and fresh uh, lychees. Wow. Love the sound of Abinda's two dishes. 
He's taken the guinea fowl off the bone, he's put a few little seasonings into a sous vide bag, he's poached it in the water bath, and he's gonna just gently cook it on the skin side down to get a little bit of color and crispiness, and that's gonna be sitting with that lovely sounding korma sauce. And the fox nuts, I've never had them before, and I'm really looking forward to trying them. I've been this dessert, we have a coconut parfait, Abinda has set a parfait in half dough moulds and then dipped it into a bit of chocolate so it resembles a cracked open coconut. I think it's very clever. I love the sound of this turmeric fennel ice cream that's going with it. The question is, will it work with the rest of the dish? Chefs, you have just 20 minutes left, OK? Huge day. 20 minutes left. Chefs have got their heads down. You can feel the pressure in the kitchen. You can feel the tension. Our chefs are now cooking for that place in finals week. This is massive. Three minutes. Just three minutes. Thirty seconds. Get it on a plate now. <laughs> Chefs, that's it. Time's up. Stop. Oh. Oh. Okay. All right. All right. To secure his place in finals week, Jan has glazed his duck breast with port, soy, and honey, and served with a date puree, braised salsify, toasted hazelnuts, a red wine jus, and a side of fennel slaw with confit duck leg in a soy, port, and orange blossom vinaigrette. That is very rare. Jan, I love your ideas. The chopped hazelnuts that you've toasted and you brought them together with the emulsion of the salsify is delicious. You've got lovely little hints of flavours running through the dish, but the duck is not cooked enough. That's a real shame because your flavours are divine. Across the skin of that duck, you've got salty sweetness with soy and honey, which is just delightful buttery, nutty salsify. The flavours are fantastic. The sauce with a bit of port running through it is delicious, and his sweetness with the dates underneath it. I've enjoyed the plate other than the duck. For dessert, Jan has made Alfonso mango carpaccio with chilli and holy basil, served with mango and lime curd, coconut financier, topped with an edible gold leaf and a coconut and lime zest ice cream. Coconut, mango, lime, really light, but bursting full of sunshine flavour. And then that very clever touch of a little bit of chilli and a little bit of Thai basil. That dessert is magical. The ice cream is creamy, it's got a hint of coconut in the background, but I love the freshness of the lime zest and the, and the lime juice. Just lifts it up and just brings a freshness to this plate. It's great. Thank you. The cake, I didn't realise, was made with the coconut until I, I ate it, you know, so it's a nice twist on, on a very classic uh, financier. It's simple, it's tasty, you know, and a great way to finish the meal. I've done all I could. Like, if the duck was cooked, I would have... It would have been perfect. It really would. But, yeah, that's... You know, that happens. Olivia's main course is chicken breast, seasoned with a black garlic glaze and coated in chicken skin crumb, served with pearl barley porridge, torched broad beans, 
charred baby gem, baby leeks, and a barley broth. That chicken, you've poached it, haven't you? It is so butter soft, it's absolutely lovely. The black garlic gives a tang of slight sweet and slight sharpness. That's matched by a slight sweet, slight sharpness in your pearl barley. I find the whole thing absolutely delicious. I love the burning of the little vegetables, the lettuce and the beans around the outside. The sauce is delicious and I love the barley that's sitting underneath, the flavour that runs through it. I'm a fan of, of black garlic. The way you've used it to also keep the crumb on top of the chicken is clever, I like it. Great flavours and for me, fantastic. For dessert, Olivia has made a jasmine cake with strawberries, strawberry syrup, strawberry and lemon verbena granita, rhubarb and strawberry foam, and a strawberry powder. It looks good, it tastes good, and as you said, there is only one way to eat it. Very clever, very, very clever. I love the sponge. It's got a lovely moistness to it. The jasmine syrup has beautifully seasoned the, the sponge and it's softened it, so it's not like a cake anymore. It's just a lovely textured base. I was concerned about granita uh, and cake, but what you've done is you've married them beautifully together and you've found a fantastic, happy balance for them to work in harmony. The foamy cream on top you've put fizz on is like having a mouthful of champagne. You then go into an enormous pack of strawberry. That is just delicious. And just the little leaves of, of lemon verbena, you know, it, it just finishes, it brings it together. Great dessert, love it. Thank you. God, yeah, I'm kind of relieved. And that's definitely my best feedback so far in the whole competition, so yeah, I'm super happy. Finally, it's our Binda, who has served Guinea fowl breast with a mustard kohlrabi puree, lotus stem crisps, fox nuts, charred spring onion, pickled baby turnips, and a coriander korma sauce. The guinea fowl breast, it's nice to cook. It's just a bit bland for me. I find I need to dip it into the, the korma sauce to really season the, the guinea fowl breast. I like the pickling and the saltiness you've got on the turnip and, of course, those fox nuts. I think they're great. I mean, that's a proper crunch you're getting in there. The korma on its own is a touch salty. The kohlrabi puree on the bottom of the plate is bitter tone to it. You could have had a little bit more on there because the, the sauce, the korma sauce, does take over. Small points of detail are really, really important at this stage of the competition. For dessert, Arbinda has made coconut parfait dipped in chocolate and filled with a lychee puree. Served with chocolate soil and fresh lychee and a turmeric and fennel ice cream. I love the look of your coconut. I think that's really, really clever. But I don't get a great deal of lychee flavour. I don't get a great deal of coconut flavour. And I find the chocolate earth a little sweet, even for me. This ice cream's got a beautiful colour, but I just found it very sweet. I want to taste more of the spices, the, the fennel and, and the turmeric that you put in it. Some of it works and some of it hasn't. The flavour of the fennel coming through the ice cream isn't really there. Parfait could have had alcohol in it, but I like the idea. There's just a couple of points of the detail that haven't been executed as good as they should have been. That's a mixed reviews from all the judges. Not really confident. It's going to be very, very tough uh, going through the next round. That experience with Gareth has lifted these three. I mean, they honestly came back with a real spring in their step and a determination to move their food on, didn't they? Can we first off discuss Olivia? Because I thought today she was fantastic. I agree with you. Olivia was my chef of the day. 
Her food just packs so much flavour, so intense, and this is what I wanted to see from her cookery. She is, without doubt, the chef that should go straight through into our finals. Right, now, Yan or Albinda? That's the decision we have to make. Should we talk about Yan? There's no escaping it, the duck was undercooked. So frustrated. Everything else on the plate I enjoyed. The salsify was beautifully cooked, the purees were cooked great, the sauce was shiny, full of flavour, the right balance of sweetness from the port. It was delicious. The dessert was exceptional. Lime, coconut, mango, chilli and Thai basil. Really clever food, really well presented. A slice of beautiful tropical sunshine. Abinda's main course, the, the guinea fowl, so nicely cooked, I found the breast and, and the leg meat underwhelming that were under-seasoned for me. What really made the dish for me was the crispy lotus and those fox nuts, really crunchy. But there were little small errors in the dish. The korma sauce was salty. Abinda's dessert, I thought, looked great. I thought it was really clever. However, I was disappointed by the flavour of it. Turmeric and fennel ice cream didn't work for me. I felt it was too sweet and I didn't think the flavours came out. The coconut itself in the parfait wasn't there, it was very light. If you're going to say coconut, then put coconut flavour into it. It would be very disappointing for me to go home today over a mistake like this when everything else is perfect, but you never know, you know. Going home, definitely, I would be heartbroken. Uh, you know, done so much of hard work, given all my energy in the competition so far. So let's see what's going to happen. Chefs, this has been a very, very difficult decision. We know what it means to you. We can only take two of you through to be a part of our finals. The chef leaving the competition. Is our binder. Our binder, thank you so much. You've had an amazing competition. Well done, chef. Very well done. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, you binder. binder. Really disappointed. Huh? It's been a tough day for me, but uh, learned a lot of things. It really had good times. So yeah, really proud of myself. I've done what best I can do, but uh, you know I was not strong enough to carry forward this in, uh, in, into the next round. Ooh. Amazing. We did it, baby. I'm speechless, to be honest. So yeah. I've been given another chance, so very happy, very happy indeed. But again, the pressure is on. There's that massive relief, um, and now it's just kind of going into happiness. I'm still in shock a bit, really, because I'm just so happy to kind of be going into finals week. Next time, the semi-finals continue. As the last three chefs take on one of the most exciting Michelin-starred kitchens. Thanks, Jose. Be careful with the fish for next time. Soft hands, OK? Only the best will go through to the finals. <laughs> All right. I think you nailed it. <laughs>